Hey guys, it's Brad Gill, Next Home Lifestyles here. We're here at another new townhouse listing, and today we're gonna to do the home evaluation. So we're about to meet Vanessa Nielsen from Encore Staging, who's already inside getting set up, and we're gonna come up with a game plan on exactly what to do to whip this townhouse into market shape. Come on, let's take a look. Hi, Brad, All right, good, so yeah. So today we're gonna to take a look at how we're gonna transform what is already pretty much ready to rock and roll, just polish it off and get it ready for the market. So let's talk about goals today. Goals at this appointment at home valuation, what we always wanna do is we wanna come up with an inexpensive solution for the homeowner to differentiate their house from other competition and to get it ready for the market. With this home being already very modern and new and in really good condition, what types of things are we gonna talk about today? Walk me through the scenes and what goes through a stager's mind as you're trying to plan. Yeah, so my planning process is basically how I'm going to lay out the space, how I'm going to define the areas, ultimately what kind of pieces will work in this type of home. And I look at, for instance, the cabinets, the existing light fixture, and I kind of look at what the design is already. Is it farmhouse? Is it industrial? Is it classic, traditional, or modern? So based on that, that's the type of furniture and decor. I could work with the existing style of the home or I can elevate it to look differently. Okay, Vanessa, so tell me, why would you bring in modern furniture? If this place wasn't contemporary and it was traditional, I would bring in modern furniture because we want to elevate the look of the home. We want to make the home look newer. The other reason that Vanessa is gonna bring in modern furniture here is because in this market, in the townhouse and condominium market, we are competing against a lot of newer developments. So developments that are being built that are high density, so we have even more modern properties. So we have to do whatever we can to dress it up and bring it up to be the same modern or even better than all the model homes out there people are going through in the brand new developments. This here is going to be a living room space. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Looks like a dirty balcony to me. For right now, once it gets cleaned up and we put patio furniture in here, you got a usable space. The homeowner has already moved out. So they've already purchased their replacement property. So they have an advantage over the fact they can move all their furniture out. So we basically have carte blanche on getting Vanessa's vision in here and making sure that everything's dialed in. Absolutely. So it makes the design super versatile to work with. Take a look at this light fixture. It defines the area as the dining room area. I love this light, but we have a problem. It's too big for the space. So your recommendation is gonna to be to swap it out to something that's more appropriate given the dimensions and the size of the yes. house we're working with. Yes, this home with the tile feels nice and clean, but then you got this condition here. So that's something that you and your team would be taking care of. Would you suggest a restaining, a repainting? You know, it would be fun to paint it white. Because if it needs to be painted anyway, we can lighten up the kitchen. It'll be fun is painting it that gray color. Yeah, the keystone gray. Keystone gray. That one I think would work really well. Oh, I noticed something. Yes. We have another problem here, Houston. We have a light bulb that's out. And on top of it, we have the old CFL bulbs. Light bulbs are something that's really cheap and easy to swap out. When it comes to the old CFL bulbs, for recess lighting, it is a little more complicated. So the whole entire lighting can does need to be replaced and upgraded to LED, but it's not too expensive. And also throughout the rest of the house, we also have the old incandescent bulbs up in the recess lights. The same kind of thing we can swap out and do a nice little retrofit LED to really brighten it up and modernize as well. I'm gonna try and brighten things up for you. Thank you. So what do we have here? That light needs updating. So light fixture, okay, so we can recommend a, a swap out. What about the mirror? Update the mirror as well. What are we looking at here? Looks like a really nice entrance. I would say do nothing. I would update this because it gives it a more traditional style. Alrighty, let's go upstairs and take a peek and see what's going on. Well, cabinets here are good, so there's no problem with that water stain. All right, here we are, guest bedroom. See, personally, I really like that light. I love this light. Okay, good. Yes. It kind of looks like a jellyfish. It does, doesn't it? Having curtains here defines the area too much, making the wall feel smaller because it's focusing on a narrow window. So would you say remove them all together? Remove it all together. Paint color, this is neutral enough actually, but if you want to just make it move in ready for people, get it white. 
Wow, look at this purple bathroom. This would be gone, we'd replace it with something else, but I would recommend painting this, plus changing out the light fixture. All right, on to the master. Let's remove the ceiling fan and add a different light. Got it. But it does look like a really nice ceiling fan. Where the bed is going to be, it's okay, but I think it just gives it a more outdated look. So I just measured the length of this wall. It's 153 inches. This is where I'm going to be putting that queen bed. So that brings up another question I know that I have all the time is, how do you know what's appropriate bedroom size for king size bed, queen size bed? How do we figure that out? So you see here where the door is, you only have a short wall here. If I were to put in a king size, it would come out to here. When we're showing the home, we don't want this passage to be blocked. So we want to avoid that by bringing in something smaller. How do we know which wall is appropriate? Some rooms are more obvious than others. So in this room, the obvious wall would be the biggest wall. This wall here, someone could feasibly put a bed here, but presentation wise, it just doesn't look right because you're confined within a shorter length. Well, thank you for enlightening me. This is an amazing closet already, but you see that they took down some things or maybe the previous owner was being painted around. So I would just paint this wall white. Yeah, and if we have the touch up paint, that's something quick and easy that we can do. Oh my goodness. Looks like someone likes Tiffany's too much in here. I kind of feel like I'm in an aquarium. What are your tips for this room? This room is a little bit funky, but I love that it's got an ensuite bathroom. So I would like to do this as an office day bed. That makes sense. But why would you do that? The reason why we would do this is because there's only three bedrooms in this home. And if every room can be shown as a bedroom, it adds a lot of value. Agreeable. This room is a little bit smaller. So technically you can put in a twin or even a full size bed. But again, it would block up some passages. So to maximize the aesthetics and the function of this room, we would put in a day bed here and a desk there. I really like feeling calm, cool, and underwater. Should we keep or is a recommendation to some different? If you like that calm, cool water feeling, I'll send you to Miami. <laughs> Done. <laughs> when am I going? In this space, we do want to neutralize it. All right, a private patio area. Very nice patio area that's open to a public or the community. It's like there's so many options one can do out here, but basically having nice furniture out here brings people's eye to the furniture. Plus it's going to be first impression because we have the entrance right here. Yes. So having something warm, inviting. Mm -hmm. Garages are not that big of a deal. This is more modern house, so at least it's a finished garage. I'm not worried about taping it off. Sellers actually have some really nice organizational racks over there. We're just hanging bicycles. Once we stage, you'll be able to see the type of furniture we put in and why we choose the size we do. So stick around. I can't wait to see how the transformation comes out. So I think I better get to work now. I think you better. What are you doing standing around by the fireplace? Get work. Get to work. Hey guys, and we're back. It's been about 30 days since we were last here talking about what we we're gonna be doing to prepare this home for sale. So now's the big day. We're gonna go check out. All the work's been done. It's been staged. And not only that, but we had multiple offers and we're pending sale. So let's go see what's in store on the inside and then we can talk about the results that we had. that pretty house. Man, it looks Man. a lot like this one we're looking at. It looks beyond a model home. Look at the light fixtures. Yeah. Those light fixtures are great. I wonder what genius picked those out. Man. Uh, let's start out with uh, the family room. And remember there were curtains up here. But we took that down and I feel that there's more natural light in here now. We define the space as such with a larger area rug so then we can have all feet of the furniture on the rug. And we were able to fit in a full size sectional without feeling too bulky. To further section the space, we had conversational pieces through the accent chairs. So now we have a cohesive living room. As you can see here, we further define the space. 
of the dining room through the chandelier here. So we chose this simple light fixture because one, it's stylish and two, it was not encroaching upon another space. So great separation we have here. Definitely doesn't feel like one big long room anymore and lots of natural light as well. Love the light fixture choice. One thing to point out as well is we didn't need to change the paint color. Because we were planning on bringing in brighter LED lights updating the space and making it brighter. So hence the wall color that was there didn't need to be painted. Neutral colors are always great and we save some money, which is always really nice. I love these pendants that were already here so they didn't need to be changed out, but the light next door to it in the dining room had to work with this. Good point, Vanessa. I really like how the lighting in each room, although distinct for each area, is still very cohesive and works together very well. The big job in this room were the cabinets. I think the original color was a bit too dark in the space. We opted for a lighter, trendy color. So with the color of the floor and the original darker wood color of the cabinets, made a lot more sense to lighten them up. But quick question, what color is this and how come we didn't go in white? Most of the time we do go with white if you've been watching our segments, but we want it to be a little bit more playful in the space. And I think it came out great because we have lots of different accents. They're a little off-white with the tile and the backsplash, as well as the original paint on the walls, which is obviously in off-white as well. Fantastic job. High five. All right, on to the next area. Let's go. Let's head up on upstairs. and the little bedroom. Oh yes, I see that we left the color the same. Yeah, this room we kept the color alone because it was neutral enough, even though it is a light baby blue, but I felt it was neutral enough to where we didn't need to budge. But as you can tell by looking at the bathroom, we did go ahead and paint the bathroom white. It was lavender. And it was loud. Let's go into the master. Moving on. I love the light in here. First impression, wow. Number one, I love the light fixture. Great recommendation on that. How you laid out the bedroom, again, it really fills the space, but at the same time is uh, very minimal. So you can feel how big the, the bedroom is. I can tell we left the paint color the same. It looks great. Thank you. The most important change we made in here was changing out the fan. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember walking in and feel like it was gonna chop off my head. We took down the drapes and we maximized the amount of natural light coming in. And the ceiling looks taller, so the space looks bigger. Look at this room. Ah, here we go. Remind me, what exactly did we do in here? We changed the paint, but it's a different color. So they uh, took a paint color from upstairs and they brought it downstairs too. And it came out good. So great job on the staging out here. I like the fact that you didn't just throw down a couple wicker chairs. You actually added a couple pillows, a rug, and a little uh, outdoor uh, bar area. So I could totally picture myself working on the computer out here or even maybe doing some yoga or just relaxing and listening to music. I think it really helps buyers envision a totally new space. Vanessa, incredible job. So let's dive into the numbers. So based on the suggestions we made, what then was the total spending from the sellers? So the seller ended up investing just about $10,000 into preparing the house for sale. The big ticket item for this particular project was painting the cabinetry. So that came out to be $4,000. Carpet was the next big ticket item. So carpeting here was 3,500. Let me ask you about carpet. Would it be more expensive to do smooth flooring or carpet? Whenever we're gonna do a hard surface flooring, laminate, engineered hardwood or tile, that's always gonna be two to three times more expensive than going with carpet. If your goal is to save money, then carpeting is definitely the solution. So what else? Next, we talked about paint, right? So even though we left the colors on the majority of the walls and the main living areas, we did do touch-ups to them. So we did touch-ups, we repainted a bathroom, and we repainted the bedroom downstairs. So all together, $1,500 is how much paint ran. Lighting, 
So we spent about $1,000 on lighting, that included the cost of the fixtures, plus having our wonderful electrician come through and make sure that everything got wired up properly. I think not only did we save money, but we also saved on time because a nicer looking home now makes it that much easier to sell. Doing the touch-ups and the pre-listing prep always increases marketability, and then having the staging come through to finish it off and compliment and have the entire home feel like a model home definitely speeds the process. So all in all, we were on the market Get this, for less than seven days, we had multiple offers coming through. The original price point that we were shooting for, which was somewhere between a million two hundred and fifty thousand to 1.3, we actually blew past it. Wow. I know, right? So we're currently pending sale at a million three hundred and fifty thousand. So the 10,000 in pre-listing prep work gave us the opportunity to earn an extra $50,000. So what return on investment is that for the seller? It's about 500%. Absolutely. Oh, wow. So compared to the last project we did, we had a high return here, but spent less. How come? So we were able to keep our costs down on this particular project because number one, we had a great design coordinator who suggested inexpensive updates, inexpensive light fixtures that still made the home feel modern and bring it up to the level we were looking for. Yes, there's always alternate ways to design a space and where we can save but maximize the style is what we do. Clients couldn't be happier. On to the next one. See you later. Bye.